You have clicked or tapped on the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Uh, this is what we call Weather for Weather Geeks. We cover Northeast Ohio and Western PA in detail in this video, but we talk about uh, other sciencey stuff, including some national weather topics sometimes in this video. We wanted to start out this evening by talking about uh, the topic of fog, because it was a concern this morning. It may be even more of a concern on Thursday. You know, there's a couple of different types of fog. In the late summer and fall, it's common for us to call to have what we call radiation fog. That's where <clears throat> you have a clear sky overhead, maybe some moisture still on the ground or near the ground, and as you lose <clears throat> heat out into space with a clear sky overhead, the moisture that's near the ground condenses into droplets, and sometimes that results in dew, and sometimes it results in fog. And well, a different kind of fog is uh, what we call advection fog. That's this is the kind of fog that uh, is a concern not only here locally, but in a lot of the eastern U.S. Uh, in this kind of a pattern, this is where warmer air advects or moves over a pretty cold surface. Sometimes you have snow on the ground. Even if you don't have snow on the ground, the ground is pretty cold, of course, with the uh, weather we've had of late. And So this can result in the formation of fog. The land is much colder than the air that's blowing over it. The air is also fairly moisture-laden a lot of times when we have a warm front lifting in in the uh, dead of winter after a prolonged cold spell. And as a result, uh, the air is cooled to saturation, and this uh, this recipe is something that we're seeing right now. You got a cold ground, you've got a warm front, you've got a fairly moist air mass by January standards, and even though most of our snow has melted at this point, uh, certainly it is a recipe for fog formation. We had it this morning, not so much this afternoon. Visibilities are fine as of this recording, but I would suspect the visibility is going to start uh, lowering later on tonight and towards. Thursday morning. Here's one model depiction showing the reduction in visibility as we head towards daybreak. And look at this model depiction for tomorrow. This is midday. This is early afternoon. Unlike that radiation fog that we a lot of times see in the late summer and, f and fall, advection uh, fog can uh, stick around for a lot of the day. You know, the sun angle's weak at this time of the year, so the sun's not going to real, really do a good job of burning off any fog. And so this could be a day where it's just foggy most of the day. A lot of clouds, probably not much rain on Thursday, but maybe you remember it as a pretty foggy day. The fog should then thin out by Friday morning. We're not alone in this. Everywhere, everywhere where you see the, kind of this gray color, that's a fog advisory. So there are, you know, it's, I, I don't know, what, a dozen states at least under some sort of fog advisory uh, this evening. Closer to home, nothing issued by our local National Weather Service offices yet for our viewing area, but there are fog advisories out for the I-71 corridor, central Ohio, and also out to our east across central PA. And I'm not going to be surprised if this area is filled in with new fog advisories at some point this evening or overnight for tonight. Otherwise, of course, it's been a damp day and the uh, radar loop just after 7 p.m. bears that out. Nothing all that heavy, and what you see is kind of what you get for much of the rest of the night tonight. Rainfall totals over the last 24 hours, generally on average about a quarter to a half an inch worth of rain. We'll add uh, some to these totals overnight. And then again, as we head into Thursday night, and our next chance for rain then is late Saturday into Saturday night. In the meantime, tonight, yeah, like I said, what you see is what you get. Some light rain's gonna be around all evening into parts of the overnight. This will become much more scattered in nature towards tomorrow morning, but with this low cloud deck and fog, there could be some mist and drizzle in addition to the fog tomorrow morning right through tomorrow afternoon. Even though you're not going to see much on your radars on whatever app you're using, uh, moisture that f kind of flies under the radar, if you will, uh, can occur and uh, precipitation can occur that the radar can't really see in these kinds of situations. Now, the bulk of the daylight hours on Thursday will be that kind of a day, you know, mist and drizzle, but you know, not a lot of real heavy rain or steady rain at all until later in the day when our next warm front lifts in. And towards sunset, towards dinner time Thursday evening, I think rain will become more commonplace, setting the stage for another soggy evening. Thursday evening, the fog could still be a problem into Thursday night before it thins out towards Friday morning. After a soggy Thursday evening, it probably becomes a little more scattered in nature overnight, and then I think the last of the raindrops are gone by the time a lot of us head out the door Friday morning just a sea of clouds for Friday and a lot of clouds for Saturday as well. And boy, if you're looking for sunshine, this is not your pattern for the next several days. Additional rain over the next 72 hours, heaviest in West Virginia down into Kentucky, uh, where some flood watches are out. Uh, flooding is not really a concern around here. Our additional amounts should be generally under a half of an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch at most across our TV viewing area. But even though this is a pretty cloudy pattern, it's a mild pattern. Yes, we're going to take a step back early next week, but it's only back to about average. 
and then we start getting well above average as we head towards the very end of January and especially the start of February. So by that first weekend of February, we're probably looking at at least upper 40s, if not 50s, for daytime highs. And speaking of those averages, I, I put this on social media earlier today. Uh, it's by a fraction of a degree, but on the 24th of January, our average high in Youngstown goes from 34.0 to 34.1 beginning the process that takes us all the way through July. So starting today, our average temperatures start rising. It starts out with our high temperatures starting to rise. Our low temperatures will start that process here before too much longer as well. In about 10 days, we'll be up to a balmy 35 for those 30 year averages. So, you know, we're still in what I call the dead of winter and I really don't uh, start thinking of spring and thinking about you know the increasing sun angle and things like that until we get to about valentine's day so we've got a few more weeks worth of uh you know the heart of winter being with us that being said i don't see a lot of wintry weather coming our way over the next couple of weeks you know you never know when my, uh, some storm system might you know kind of uh, thread the needle if you will but generally the pattern is not going to be real, real supportive of any sort of big wintry threats big cold snaps through at least the first handful of days of February. That's it for me on Weather for Weather Geeks tonight. I've got a couple of days off Thursday and Friday, so uh, thank you as always for watching this week. I'll see you back here, same time, same place, coming up on Monday.